Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today we are going to be making an adorable DIY design wall for your sewing space. So if you're new to design walls or you don't know what they are, they're basically a way to display all of your in-progress projects. It really helps to be able to move your quilt blocks around make sure that they all kind of look good before you sew them together. For the past year, I've had a piece of batting literally pinned to my wall with thumbtacks, which worked perfectly fine. But over time, the batting does kind of start to like droop and like uh, kind of stretch a little bit. Also, it's not very cute and it wasn't even really perfectly square. I just used kind of a scrap Piece, so it was a little bit janky looking but today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute one you can make it any size you like using this technique I actually made a really good size one for my whole wall so that I can put up a ton of blocks and really have a lot of space to work with but you can make it any size you want it's gonna be super easy so let's get started here's what you're gonna need so for this project you're gonna want some foam board. Now this is just the trifold project board. I got the three foot by four foot section. So mine's quite large, but you can of course get whatever size you want. You're also going to want some of these command strips. These are the Velcro kind. I also used a little bit of duct tape. That's optional. You're also going to want some glue sticks and a glue gun. You're also going to need some two and a half inch fabric strips for the binding and then some batting. You'll also probably find a pair of scissors or um, rotary trimmer handy. I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up my foam board here and I like to flip it over and then this you'll see this happening a little bit later but I'm going to tape right along these seams right here just to give them a little bit more stability. Of course you don't have to do a piece this large you can make it any size you want and you don't have to do the trifold that just was the size that kind of fit my wall space. Next I'm going to cover it with a piece of batting and I'm just laying my batting out so that it's um, covering the entire foam core board and I'm going to go ahead and start by placing a row of hot glue just right down that one edge. Once I get that hot glue all the way down that edge, I'll go ahead and fold my batting back and just press it in place. Next, I'm gonna fold the rest of the batting back all the way up to the side that I glued. Then I'm just gonna start putting hot glue all over the board and just pressing down that batting as I go. And then of course, I'm going to put some along all four edges as well, just to secure it even further and just make sure that everything stays in place. Now that we have it all glued down, I'm just going to trim off my extra batting. So I'm just gonna flip my board over to make that a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to use my rotary trimmer and just trim off all of my extra batting. Now, as I mentioned previously, I'm going to add a little bit of duct tape just to those seams where my board folds. If you're not using a foldable one, you don't have to do this. It's also optional, but I just felt like it gave my board just a little bit more stability. Now it's time for binding. So I have cut some binding strips. They're two and a half inches by width of fabric, and I've just cut enough to get around my board. So yours will be whatever size board you have. Um, and I'm just gonna sew them end to end like you see right here. And I'm just sewing them right sides together and I'm just going to grab another strip and add that and I'm just going to keep sewing them end to end just like this um, until I've gotten all of my strips attached. Next we're going to take that over to the ironing board and I'm just going to press that strip in half um, wrong sides together and I'm going to press it the entire length down then I'm going to open it back up and press the edges in so that they um, meet right there at that center crease that we just created and I'm going to do that on both sides all the way down. I'm going to take that strip over to my sewing machine and just get a nice zigzag stitch going and I'm just going to zigzag stitch right down the center of that strip. It's going to kind of help hold those um, side pieces in. It's also going to give me a nice center line to follow when I'm adding my binding on to the edge of my board. Next I'm just going to start on one side and I'm just going to add some glue, hot glue right to that edge and I'm just going to press my binding strip down. And I'm kind of lining up the zigzag stitch right along that hot glue line. And that just kind of helps me keep it centered on there. And this will be a lot easier if you're not trying to film yourself because you can kind of stand your board up. I'm doing it sideways so you can see it so some of my hot glue is dripping off there, but you get the idea. And you're just gonna glue that all the way around all four edges of your board. When you get back to the end, it helps if you have a partner that can kind of help hold your board up for you. And you're just going to fold over that raw edge Put a little bit of hot glue there and just fold down that raw edge. And then you can finish gluing that edge in place. 
Now we're gonna lay our board down and just starting on one side, I'm just gonna run a bead of hot glue right along that batting edge and just press down my binding. Now in the corner here, you're just gonna press down one side all the way to the edge and then you can press down the other side like I'm showing here so you have a nice mitered corner there. And if it gets too hot, you can use a wooden stick or like a popsicle stick to kind of help press that edge down because um, it will get kind of hot. So be careful you don't burn your fingers. We're gonna do all four corners this same way. So I'm just gonna continue gluing all of my edges down and then just making sure those corners are nice and mitered. Once I'm done doing the front side of my board, I'm going to flip it over and repeat this exact same process on the back side. Next, I'm gonna take these command strips and I really prefer these Velcro ones. I feel like they hold more weight. So I highly recommend this kind over just the sticky kind. And we're just gonna take two and we're going to Velcro them together. And then you can just peel off the sticky backing on one of the sides and place it on the back of your board. And I'm just gonna place these all around the edges of my board. So I think on my three by four board, I put um, two or three on each of the long edges and then one on each of the short edges. Next, I'm just gonna press that up onto my wall and just make sure it's nice and secure and we're all done. Then you can just stick your blocks up onto your design wall just like magic. All right guys, that is it. This project could not be any easier. The only thing that's kind of hard to deal with is the hot glue gun, especially if you're doing a really large design wall like what I was doing. Um, but otherwise, it's actually very, very easy. And if you're not trying to film yourself doing it, it's even easier. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure to share it with me on social media. You can definitely follow me on Instagram for more fun and quilty inspiration. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps me out. You can even hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.